how to use the Microsoft Planner effectively. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can use the Microsoft Planner. So Microsoft Planner is a simple all-in-one feature packed tool which allows you to stay on track and achieve more. It's especially helpful if you're already using the Microsoft ecosystem and you want a simple to use planner. So moving on, let's jump right in. To get access to Microsoft Planner, you're going to open up your Microsoft 365 account and you can click on your apps on the top left. Once you do that, you're going to click on Planner over here. And once you click on Planner, this is going to open up the separate Microsoft Planner. Now, there's a difference that a lot of people don't realize is that you can also access the same planner on your Teams. So if it is the same Microsoft account and you open up Teams, okay, and once I go into Teams, I will see on the left I have Planner. If you don't have it, you can click on Apps and add the planner, but you are able to access the same planner in your Teams section. It's not going to be a different planner. It's the same planner on your account, which can be accessed in two different ways. Now, once we have accessed our planner, this is what it's going to look like. You will see three different sections, a section for your current tasks, a section for your plans, and your My Day. So in your planner, you can see a tool on the bottom left to start building a new plan. Now in planner, you have plans and portfolios. Portfolios are going to be different and they are only available on a premium version of MS365. However, you can click on plan and you can choose the type of plan you are creating. You can get started with one of their templates, including employee onboarding, business plans, project management, simple plans, and software development. And your planner plans don't need to be only catered to you. You can make plans that are for your entire team and share this with your team. So I'm going to build a project management plan and I'm just going to click on use template. Then once I do that, I'm going to click on create and our new plan has now been created. Now, once your plan has been created, you can pin it to the left as well. You will see a default grid view, but my preferred is a board view because it gives me a bit more visual access to all of my items. Then we can see we've added a chart as well as a scheduler tool. Now I can go back into the board view and you can see different statuses that our tasks have been filtered under, including things such as initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, closing. So I can further categorize my individual tasks in my planner, and I can add different buckets to manage them. This is some default data that has been added for our project to identify goals and objectives, develop strategies and plans. Now, I'm going to show you guys how you can build a planner space by default with this kind of layout. So I'm going to unpin this and we're going to build a new plan, build it basic. And I'm going to be calling this my air marketing. Let's say this is my air market and I'm just going to click on create. Now, once you create a new plan, you will see grid views, board views, scheduling tools and charts. Now you're going to go into your board section and you can change the bucket names. So I'm going to add bucket names according to my business uh, statuses. So let's say this is going to be tasks or for my project. Let's say in my project, we have ideas or let's say we have tasks. Then we have in process or undergoing then we have waiting for approval then we have approved and then our second bucket is going to be rejected like so so once we have built this little system i can click on add task and add a task name for example a task is going to be to design a graphic or still digital ads like this. Now, if I click on a task, I can actually assign far more detail. So if I click on this task, I can assign this to a person within this planner. Then I can add labels. You will see there are colors added, but you can actually define labels based upon the niche they are in, based upon the grouping that you have. So you already have things such as in process, repeating priorities. So you can add labels based upon what type of task this is. So let's say this is going to be for my graphics team, or let's say this is going to be for my animation team or marketing team, whatever it might be. This is a marketing related task. Then for 
Let's say for operations, I want yellow labels. For tasks that are related to finance, I want blue labels like this. So now I can click on over here and add a label. Now the best part about using planner is going to be how you can add multiple labels. So let's say this is related to both marketing and also related to operations. So I can tag or label it under both. Then below that, it's going to choose the progress and the priority. This is medium priority and I can choose a start date. Let's say it needs to start tomorrow and it needs to be finished by the 21st. Then I can choose whether or not this is a repeating task. So if it repeats daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or a customized interval. We can also add notes to a task and we can also add a checklist. So for a graphic for our digital ads, we want to choose a color scheme let's say, and then we also have to set a branding option like this or whatever the subtasks of your larger task are, you can add those. You can choose to display this on the card or not. This is up to your personal preferences. And you can also add attachments. Once done, your task is going to start looking like this. Now, as the task progresses, you can add it like this. However, if you wanna use the default option, you can choose the progress from here. And once it is completed, it would be marked under completed tasks. So you might say, hey, why would I add statuses like this then? This just personally depends on how you work. For some people, only adding, you know, only adding these buckets that are labeled on the niche that it is in is not going to be very helpful because they want a visual section. However, for some people, it might work when they have a completed tasks tab under because if you have hundreds of tasks added here, the completed task tab is going to be right at the bottom. So depends on how you want to mark everything to be done. Now you can click on move task and you can move it to a different bucket as well. And even under that, it's going to be marked under completed tasks. Now, if we click on schedule, you will see the task is going to be scheduled like this. And you can see all of your unscheduled tasks on the right and you can just drag and drop them. If you haven't set up dates already, you can just drag and drop them and choose when things need to be completed, what are undergoing. Then you also can view everything on the grid view for a larger overarching view. You will also see charts and you can add filters in your charts. You can group them based upon dates, based upon assignees, progress labels, buckets, and more. Now, if you want to add people to your planner, so if this is a team project, I'm going to click on share and we can create a group and we can choose the privacy and enter the names of the members. So I can start adding those people into my planner. I can also add this to an existing group. So I have some pre-existing groups in my MS365 account and I can choose if it is related to that particular group. And just like that, we can start creating our own plans on the MS Planner. Now, we also have a My Tasks section, which allows you to see all tasks that are assigned to you. You can also filter out all tasks, private tasks assigned to you, and flagged emails as well. So your Outlook emails can also be managed from here. You can also take a look at your day simply by clicking on your day and seeing everything you have planned for the day. And you can do all of this in Microsoft Team Apps also. So if you go into your MS Teams like this, this is my Teams, I can do all of these things in my Teams application. Now to get started with all of this, you might say, hey, it must be pricey, but the Simple Planner is included in your Microsoft 365 subscription. And if you want some updated features such as goals, project management, premium templates and task dependencies, you can go with the planner plan one for only $10 per month. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or queries, you can leave those in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.